My hair has been totally a mess this entire time. What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Emily and this is part 10 of 10 of So You Want to Go to Medical School. My original series that includes YouTube videos, check out the playlist here, as well as my Instagram at emily.med where I put together these cute little guides that are just tips and tricks that I learned from my medical school application process. Hopefully people, someone, anyone finds them informative and enjoyable to watch, right? First, please make sure that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe button down below and push the bell icon so you get notified when my next video comes out. So today's video is reviewing my own AMCAS application. Some people consider this like really personal information. Let's pull it up. Bam. Okay. Okay. So first page. What is this? Oh, this is just all the boring stuff, like identifying information, who you are, who your parents are, languages you spoke at home. A lot of this stuff, like, no, I wasn't in the military, so I don't have anything too interesting to say about all this. Okay, so here's my transcript. Let's just jump right into it. My freshman year grades, I took two AP classes in high school. BC Calc basically counts as Calc 1 and 2. So at college, I technically didn't need to take any math class. Yeah, here's my transcript, have fun with that. So note, this is like a freshman thing, and that is writing intensive. That kind of fulfilled a semester of English class, although some schools might need a year. Check out my video on med school prerequisites up here. These are my music lessons, so that's when I play piano. And honestly, I don't always get an A, so she does grade me like based on how I perform. Like one year I kind of messed up, so let's see. Uh, yeah, we have to take Spanish like as a bio major. I had to take the basic level So that was a requirement after taking Spanish 103 like this was part of my minor. Um, this is when I went abroad This was my minor so yeah, I did pretty well um, freshman sophomore year uh, This class was really difficult for me. I did not like linguistics I mean the professor basically ended up throwing out the grades and just you know how hard you worked which was really generous of him but honestly if we had grades i would not have done that well yeah so sophomore junior year and then this is where it stops right this is your senior fall you're applying hello Ugh, i do not like that color Hold on. okay so this is your senior fall so this is future you're not gonna have any grades so really you only have freshman sophomore and junior year and if you take a class before your senior year those are all the grades that you have when you actually apply to med school. They're gonna see these grades and they wanna make sure you're not like, you know, flunking or something, but yeah. So that's how your GPA for med school is calculated. Um, and I also took some kind of chill classes. Like I wasn't trying to kill myself while applying to med school. I was pretty much done all my prereqs at this time. I think I mentioned this, but summer physics before my junior year really helped because my junior year, I didn't have to worry about taking physics especially physics 2, at the same time I was studying for the MCAT, which had physics 2 on it. I thought physics 1 and 2 during the summer was the move to go. Chemistry, it's more difficult in the summer because the labs are really long for orgo and it's harder to skimp on them, I guess. Whereas physics, the labs are a lot less, you know, convoluted and it depends on what school you take physics classes at. Here we are, that's the lab for physics. Okay, so finally, here it is. Woo woo, cat's out of the bag. That was my total GPA calculated by AMC. It's really similar to my transcript GPA at my undergrad, but AMC calculates a grade for you. So how it works, I'm sorry, I didn't mention this. When you're applying to med school, on the application itself, you have to write in and type every single grade that you got, but then you also send them your transcript. So you're looking at your transcript, trying to copy and paste exactly what's on your transcript, and then you send them the transcript anyway, and they confirm like, yeah, you were honest about this, or you didn't make a mistake in putting the grade, so. Whatever, I don't really know what AMCAS grade is versus transcript grade, but I guess if there's a different grading scale or something, I know there's sometimes there's rounding and for certain schools and I don't know. But, oh yeah, as you can see, my school was on a semester basis and I was able to fit in all my classes. Although I feel like if I had gone to a trimester school, I would have been able to pack more into that and take in a bigger variety of classes, but whatever. So yes, GPA, um, this is my, bio, chem, physics, math GPA. Usually the average is like a three, five, three, six. Obviously, I think it's pretty obvious. It's gonna be a little bit lower than your overall, or it should be because 
you know, science classes are more involved. Like you have lab components and all that stuff. So discrepancy. And then of course my non-science GPA was pretty high because I really tried to take easier classes. Um, okay, and here it is. Here's the MCAT score. Yeah, uh, could have done better. Could have done better. I only took it once. I took it super late. May 18th, I took this thing. And then, you know, June 1st, the application opens up, but I didn't get my score until June 18th. So I got my score June 18th. Uh, cried a little bit in the bathroom. I was just really overall upset. It's not a bad score. It's just on that cusp between what kind of school you should apply to. Should you apply DOMD? Or should you apply to state school or private school? So I think for me, I just had trouble processing that. And I did study a lot, but uh, I guess I didn't follow my own MCAT video study tips. I didn't follow all of them. That's how it was. And that's honestly what I got on my practice exam, the practice exam two weeks before. So I'm like, well, at least it wasn't worse. Hey. Here are my experiences. I think this really stood out to the admissions committee. So when applying to med school, everything that you did freshman through junior year is done. It's done with. Those are your experiences, your test score and your grades, that's that. How you sell and how you present your application matters. You have to find out what's your hook. So for me, I try to emphasize the Spanish speaking because my school is in an underserved community and they're super big on service and giving back. We're just really connected with the surrounding lower income area. So for me, that was kind of my catering to the school to which I applied because I only ended up applying to one school. So my Spanish speaking and getting a interpreter and certification was my like claim to fame. That's what made me stand out. That's a little tip about how to present your application um, so research lab I told you I worked with snakes um, this was over the summer right so this was summer before my fourth year okay this was the summer before senior year that really pushed my application I put like the research I squeezed it in last minute just like yeah I have experience with scientific methods of doing research okay oh look here it is okay fun fact here I went to TCNJ there you go. Yeah, so this is just saying my level of Spanish speaking. So once again, emphasizing Spanish stuff. I think I had maybe four activities and work experiences being related to Spanish speaking and teaching. Uh, leadership was a biology peer mentor. That's just what it sounds like. It wasn't super involved, but I did have a few underclassmen and they would, you know, text me and ask me questions. And then we had a big picnic thing, of course, in the beginning of the year to meet them and some other events as well throughout the year. This is another thing with my lab. This was just saying I shadowed my junior year because I started shadowing my junior year, got involved that summer between my junior and senior year. So that was really last minute. I did a summer program that allowed me to work full time basically as a researcher in the woods. Good times. This is vice president of Catholic Campus Ministry. I did the retreats, so it wasn't too intense, but I was still involved in the community. I honestly ended up dropping this after my junior year. I was like, this is too much. Moving on back to the Spanish thing. This is an on-campus job and my college does not have TAs or anything, but we had something similar for specifically Spanish and other languages. So when you take a basic level like Spanish 101, 102, 103, and 203 also. In addition to going to class twice a week with your actual real professor, you have one hour where you have to go and practice Spanish and you have to talk in Spanish and you play games. And so the person who leads this and organizes this and creates lesson plans is a student as well, like an upperclassman, maybe a native speaker. That's an on-campus job. And so you work with underclassmen, people who go to your same college, you play games with them in Spanish and do fun activities. So that's what I did. And that was another talking point in my interview of like, oh yeah, by the way, I basically teach some conversational Spanish. It was a great experience. And that's where I got the idea of, oh, maybe I want to do this for my life and had that existential crisis of, oh my God, I don't want to go to med school anymore. I want to move to Spain. But yeah, check out that video here. Artistic endeavors. Yes, this is my piano studio. I spent a lot of time, there's definitely spent more than 500 hours practicing, but I didn't want to make this a meaningful experience because I wrote about this in my personal statement. So that's how I kind of strategically was able to spread out all my activities is that if I go into detail about something in my personal statement, I'm not going to write 1325 characters on the same topic. I'm going to make this not a meaningful experience and then elaborate it in my personal statement where I have a lot of characters, you know, uh, to write about. 
Um, this is Tri Beta. Yes, I love Tri Beta. I was vice president my junior year and then president my senior year. That was obviously a meaningful experience because I put a lot of time, effort, and uh, money into that organization. This is a shadowing physician. This is a urologist who was awesome. I shadowed him right before I went to college, so it just made the list. He himself, as a physician, was just someone I just really clicked with. And that is one of the physicians I think about frequently when I think of what type of doctor I want to be and the kind of relationship I want to have with my patients. So that definitely had to make it on my application and I tried to eloquently explain that in only so many characters. This was the mini med summer camp that I talked about before college as well and I talked about that in my last video I think. And Oh, this is the main shadowing. This is at my med school hospital. Shadowing during the summers in between spending my days volunteering at the hospital. So that kind of looked good because it was the same med school that I applied to, right? So that was cool. We didn't have valedictorian in my high school, but I had the highest GPA. And this was, oh, I got a high school diploma in music. I just did this training program. I had to do this test and play pieces. For a judge. I got that right before going to college, so it still makes the app, right? This was the volunteering. That was a great experience. My three meaningful experiences, I really did think about this a lot, were the Spanish, basically a TA for Spanish speaking, Tri Beta, President and Bio Honor Society, and then volunteering at the hospital. So it was a good variety of three big chunks of my undergrad career and demonstrating my interest in medicine going to medical school. Here's my personal comments. I thought a lot about my personal statement. I wanted to take a unique approach. I didn't want to just give the story of like, yeah, I volunteered at the hospital and I saw a bunch of patients I connected with them that is a great personal statement but I just wanted to kind of stand out just because a personal statement is something that is really important you can control that so your grades and GPA and your activities that's all set and done your personal statement is where it can make or break you this is the icing on the cake or the hair that you find in your food at a restaurant. For me, I decided to write about my piano experience. Going back to my meaningful experiences, I didn't get to include piano, because what am I gonna say? Like, oh yeah, I practice in the basement of the music building until 2 a.m. at night before my exam. Is that meaningful? I don't know. I wrote about it in my personal comments and I connected music to medicine. <laughs> I wanted to make it into a story because they love stories. I talk about do's and don'ts for a personal statement. Click up here to find out. See, it all comes together. Whole series just culminates to this. Yeah, they love hearing about your journey and why you want to go to medical school. You want to show them why. So I'm sure Dr. Gray would tear me apart for this. Like, what does this have to do with medicine? This whole essay, I'm talking about my intense stage fright that I get during performing. I don't know why, I just get super nervous. I think a lot of it was because sometimes I don't practice enough for these big exams or juries or recitals. And so it just psychs me out and I freeze up and I start shaking like this. So I kind of talked about that journey and how having a passion for music and really loving the pieces that I was playing in college just made me a better musician because I wanted to play, I wanted to practice. And so I guess for medicine, I guess it's my essay, having that passion for medicine, it keeps you going and that's what I want to have as a physician is loving what I do no matter how tough and grueling you know, sitting down practicing sitting down and studying for medicine it keeps me going I love it and that's what I want to do with my life so that's basically it I got a committee letter from my school because I applied early decision 
key tip. I knew I did not have the MCAT score to get a committee letter for an MD school. So when you apply early decision to med school, you can only apply to one school. Luckily, it worked out and the early decision was fine. Otherwise, I would have had to take a gap year and apply again next year. I hope you enjoyed that extra special glimpse into my life. Yeah, this concludes my So You Want to Go to Medical School series. I hope that these videos were helpful. I hope that reviewing my application let you kind of see how I got to get into med school. So if you like this video and you like the series, please give this a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and the bell icon, and leave a comment below with any questions, comments, or just DM me on Instagram at emily.med. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Bye.